Dung và Bugi, Dung Denton lại nghĩ về cha cô, Ronald Denton. Anh đã chết như thế nào sau một trận chiến dài với căn bệnh ung thư ruột kết, và tất cả tiền bạc và danh vọng mà cô tích lũy được cũng không làm được gì để cứu anh. Cô đã dành rất nhiều thời gian, công sức, sức lực và tình yêu để tìm cách cứu cha mình. Tất cả các bác sĩ, chuyên gia, bác sĩ ung thư, vật lý trị liệu, cũng như số tiền quyên góp khổng lồ của cô ấy đều không quan trọng. Cô đã cầu xin người hâm mộ quyên góp cho quỷ mà cô bắt đầu mang tên anh ấy. Cô ấy đã mất rất nhiều thời gian, hủy bỏ rất nhiều buổi biểu diễn và suýt nhận được đơn kiện từ bang Texas vì đã quảng cáo sai sự thật cho một suất xuất hiện tại Super Bowl mà cô ấy đã hủy bỏ vào phút chót, anh đã chết. Và tất cả những gì còn lại của anh là con chim anh để lại cho cô. Dilly là một chú cho búp bê vui vẻ, đầy màu sắc, năng động nhưng rất ồn ào mà cha cô yêu quý cho đến khi ông qua đời. Mỗi bức ảnh của Ronan đều có hình ảnh con chim màu xanh lam, xanh lá cây và vàng này. Dilly là niềm tự hào và niềm vui của anh. Ronan đã dạy con chim cách nói chuyện và hót. Họ có một bài hát đặc biệt mà họ sẽ hát vào mỗi buổi sáng khi Ronan chuẩn bị đi làm cho đến khi anh ấy ốm nặng và việc ca hát không còn nữa. Sáng nay, trong khi cô ấy vén tóc và vòi những cuộn dây quấn chặt trong gương trang điểm, bố cô ấy đang ở trong tâm trí của cô ấy. Cô ấy nhìn vào tấm gương sáng rực rỡ và bắt đầu nói với chính mình, bố, tại sao bố không thể ở lại lâu hơn một chút? Nước mắt cô bắt đầu rơi, khi cô bắt đầu thấy mình giống Ronan đến nhường nào, tôi đã làm tất cả những gì có thể. Tôi hy vọng bạn biết rằng cha. Tôi nhớ bạn và tôi ghét rằng bạn đã bỏ tôi ở đây với con chim này. Tôi không biết làm thế nào để yêu nó. Trong thực tế, tôi ghét nó. Mỗi lần tôi nhìn thấy nó, nó làm tôi nhớ đến bạn, và nó vẫn hát bài hát ngu ngốc đó. Tôi phải đi làm bây giờ, làng giải trí không quan tâm tôi đang đau buồn. Người hâm mộ của tôi cần tôi xuất hiện, và đó là một điều bạn đã dạy tôi làm. Cho dù mọi thứ có trở nên khó khăn đến đâu, chúng vẫn có thể và sẽ tốt hơn, vì vậy hãy tiếp tục. Tạm biệt bố. Việc trang điểm dưới mắt thật vô nghĩa, vì cô biết hôm nay cô sẽ khóc nhiều hơn vài lần. Bên cạnh đó, mới chỉ được ba tuần kể từ khi Ronan qua đời, và cô ấy đã chuẩn bị cho một trải nghiệm truyền hình với Wendy Williams. Điện thoại bắt đầu phát ra tiếng kêu của Maria Carissa on E1 for Christmas ESU. Xin chào, này Dung Dê, đó là nhà sản xuất. Chúng tôi chỉ muốn cho bạn biết rằng chúng tôi sẵn sàng tiếp nhận bạn khi bạn đến nơi. Chúng tôi sẽ xem xét tất cả các câu hỏi phỏng vấn và giúp bạn làm tóc và trang điểm nhanh nhất có thể. Có nhu cầu tức thời nào không? Giọng của Kelly bắt đầu hơi run. Dung có thể nói rằng anh ấy đã phải chịu rất nhiều áp lực, không? Nhưng cảm ơn Kels. Được rồi, ngày dê, hẹn gặp lại các bạn, dùng hít vào một hơi thật sâu và ra hiệu cho các trợ lý giúp cô đóng gói và chất đồ. Nancy và Alison đang tranh giành nhau, nhưng đã hoàn thành công việc. Nancy nghiêng người và thì thầm với Alison, người đang bận đóng gói đồ vệ sinh cá nhân, bạn có nghĩ chúng ta nên nói với cô ấy rằng Dilly đã hết thức ăn và nước uống không? Alison trả lời. Không. Không phải bạn. Hãy để tôi làm điều đó. Bạn còn khá mới, và cô ấy có thể sẽ nhai bạn. Tôi đã có cái này. Chỉ cần hoàn thành việc đóng gói đồ đạc của cô ấy trong túi Gucci. Tôi sẽ trở lại, cô bỏ những thứ mình có vào chiếc túi màu cam và hồng và bước xuống cầu thang để gặp Dung trong vườn Ajale. Rõ ràng là Dung đang khóc, nhưng Alison biết rõ hơn là yêu cầu cô ấy mở lòng. Dung không chia sẻ cảm xúc của mình chứ đừng nói đến việc cho phép bất cứ ai tin rằng cô ấy có cảm xúc gì cả. Cô ấy hắn giọng, cô Dung dê, chúng tôi nhận thấy rằng Dilly đã hết thức ăn và nước uống. Em có muốn anh bổ sung cho em không? Ai, Alison bối rối, Dilly, anh ấy hết thức ăn và nước uống. Cũng không có thức ăn trong tủ đựng thức ăn cho anh ta. Tôi có thể chạy đến cửa hàng và lấy cho anh ấy những thứ anh ấy cần và một vài món ăn vặt trong ba ngày chúng tôi vắng mặt. Chỉ, nếu bạn muốn tôi đến Miss Dung Dê. Tháng 6 trở nên bực bội hơn. Lau nước mắt, cô có thể cảm thấy đau nhói và bỏng rác từ ruột mình. Cô muốn nổ tung, nhìn kìa. Tôi không biết Dilly là ai hay anh ta muốn gì, nhưng cứ đưa cho anh ta bất cứ thứ gì và biến khỏi mặt tôi. Bạn không thấy rằng tôi đang bận sao? Em có muốn giữ vị trí trợ lý của anh không? Vân vân. Ngay lập tức. 
Cảm ơn cô, cô Dung Dê, xin lỗi. Trong một cú lao dốc, à... June and the budgie June Denton was thinking about her father, Ronald Denton, again. How he had died from a long battle with colon cancer, and how all of the money and fame she had amassed did not do anything to save him. She put so much time, effort, energy, and love into finding a way to save her daddy. All of the doctors, specialists, oncologists, physical therapists, nor her huge donations mattered. She had all but begged her fans to donate to the foundation she started in his name. She had taken so much time off of the road, canceled so many shows, and nearly received a lawsuit from the state of Texas for falsely advertising an appearance at the Super Bowl that she canceled at the last minute. He died, and all that was left of him was this bird he left her with. Dilly was a cheerful, colorful, energetic, but very loud budgie that her dad loved until his death. Every picture of Ronald had this blue, green, and yellow bird in it. Dilly was his pride and joy. Ronald taught the bird how to talk and sing. They had a special song they would sing every morning when Ronald was getting ready for work until he became very ill and the singing ceased. This morning, while she untwisted her hair and fluffed her tight coils in her vanity mirror, her daddy was on her mind. She looked into the brightly lit mirror and began speaking to herself, Dad, why couldn't you have stayed a little bit longer? Tears began to fall from her eyes, as she began to see how much she looked like Ronald. I did everything I could. I hope you know that, Daddy. I miss you and I hate that you left me here with this bird. I do not know how to love it. In fact, I hate it. Every time I see it, it reminds me of you, and it keeps singing that stupid song. I have to go to work now. The entertainment industry does not care if I am grieving. My fans need me to show up, and that is one thing you taught me to do. No matter how hard things get, they can and will get better, so keep going. Goodbye, Daddy. It was pointless to draw any under-eye makeup. For she knew she would cry more than a few times today. Besides, it has only been three weeks since Ronald died, and she was up for a television experience with Wendy Williams. The phone began to blare Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. Hello? Hey June D. It's the producer. We just wanted to let you know that we are ready to receive you when you arrive. We will go over all of the interview questions and get you into hair and makeup as quickly as possible. Any immediate demands? Kelly's voice began to shake a bit. June could tell he was under a lot of pressure. No, but thanks Kells. All right June D. See you soon. June took in a deep breath and beckoned for her assistants to help her pack and load up. Nancy and Allison were scrambling around, but getting the job done. Nancy leaned over and whispered to Allison, who was busy packing toiletries, do you think we should tell her that Dilly ran out of food and water? Allison replied, no, not you, let me do it, you are fairly new, and she will probably chew you out. I have got this. Just finish packing up her stuff in the Gucci bag. I will be back. She dumped what she had into the orange and pink bag and walked downstairs to meet June in the Azalea Garden. June was obviously crying, but Allison knew better than to ask her to open up. June did not share her feelings, let alone allow anyone to believe she had feelings at all. She cleared her throat. Miss June D., we noticed that Dilly ran out of food and water. Would you like for me to replenish it for you? Who? Allison was confused. Dilly, he ran out of food and water. There is no food in the pantry for him, either. I can run to the store and grab him what he needs and a few treats for the three days we will be away. Only, if you want me to miss June D. June was becoming more vexed. Wiping her tears away, she could feel the sting and burn coming up from her gut. She wanted to explode, look. I do not know who Dilly is or what he wants, but just give him whatever and get out of my face. Don't you see that I am busy? Do you want to keep your position as my assistant? Yes, yes, right away. Thank you, Miss June D. My apologies. In a dash, Allison rushed to the motor pool and jetted away. June entered her family home again, looking around for any sign of joy. None of the luxurious artwork she had surrounded herself with brought her happiness. None of the men she had on a waiting list as prospects brought her joy. 
she felt so empty and alone, and the love from her fans was losing its effect. A loud tweet came from upstairs. That stupid bird. I wish it would just shut up. All it does is sing that dumb song daddy taught him. Skidamarink a dink a dink had all but seared itself into its brain. When will it end? She needed the bird to stop reminding her of the first man she had ever loved, her father, Ronald. She tilted her head. June and the budgy June Denton was thinking about her father, Ronald Denton, again. How he had died from a long battle with colon cancer, and how all of the money and fame she had amassed did not do anything to save him. She put so much time, effort, energy, and love into finding a way to save her daddy. All of the doctors, specialists, oncologists, physical therapists, nor her huge donations mattered. She had all but begged her fans to donate to the foundation she started in his name. She had taken so much time off of the road, cancelled so many shows, and nearly received a lawsuit from the state of Texas for falsely advertising an appearance at the Super Bowl that she cancelled at the last minute. He died, and all that was left of him was this bird he left her with. Dilly was a cheerful, colorful, energetic, but very loud budgie that her dad loved until his death. Every picture of Ronald had this blue, green, and yellow bird in it. Dilly was his pride and joy. Ronald taught the bird how to talk and sing. They had a special song they would sing every morning when Ronald was getting ready for work until he became very ill and the singing ceased. This morning, while she untwisted her hair and fluffed her tight coils in her vanity mirror, her daddy was on her mind. She looked into the brightly lit mirror and began speaking to herself, Dad, why couldn't you have stayed a little bit longer? Tears began to fall from her eyes, as she began to see how much she looked like Ronald. I did everything I could. I hope you know that, Daddy. I miss you and I hate that you left me here with this bird. I do not know how to love it. In fact, I hate it. Every time I see it, it reminds me of you, and it keeps singing that stupid song. I have to go to work now. The entertainment industry does not care if I am grieving. My fans need me to show up, and that is one thing you taught me to do. No matter how hard things get, they can and will get better, so keep going. Goodbye, Daddy. It was pointless to draw any under-eye makeup. For she knew she would cry more than a few times today. Besides, it has only been three weeks since Ronald died, and she was up for a television experience with Wendy Williams. The phone began to blare Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. Hello? Hey June D. It's the producer. We just wanted to let you know that we are ready to receive you when you arrive. We will go over all of the interview questions and get you into hair and makeup as quickly as possible. Any immediate demands? Kelly's voice began to shake a bit. June could tell he was under a lot of pressure. No, but thanks Kells. All right June D. See you soon. June took in a deep breath and beckoned for her assistants to help her pack and load up. Nancy and Allison were scrambling around, but getting the job done. Nancy leaned over and whispered to Allison, who was busy packing toiletries, do you think we should tell her that Dilly ran out of food and water? Allison replied, no, not you. Let me do it. You are fairly new, and she will probably chew you out. I have got this. Just finish packing up her stuff in the Gucci bag. I will be back. She dumped what she had into the orange and pink bag and walked downstairs to meet June in the Azalea Garden. June was obviously crying, but Allison knew better than to ask her to open up. June did not share her feelings, let alone allow anyone to believe she had feelings at all. She cleared her throat. Miss June D. We noticed that Dilly ran out of food and water. Would you like for me to replenish it for you? Who? Allison was confused. Dilly, he ran out of food and water. There is no food in the pantry for him, either. I can run to the store and grab him what he needs and a few treats for the three days we will be away. Only, if you want me to miss June D. June was becoming more vexed. Wiping her tears away, she could feel the sting and burn coming up from her gut. She wanted to explode. Look. I do not know who Dilly is or what he wants, but just give him whatever and get out of my face. Don't you see that I am busy? Do you want to keep your position as my assistant? Yes, yes, right away. Thank you, Miss June D. My apologies.
In a dash, Allison rushed to the motor pool and jetted away. June entered her family home again, looking around for any sign of joy. None of the luxurious artwork she had surrounded herself with brought her happiness. None of the men she had on a waiting list as prospects brought her joy. She felt so empty and alone, and the love from her fans was losing its effect. A loud tweet came from upstairs. That stupid bird. I wish it would just shut up. All it does is sing that dumb song daddy taught him. Skidamarink a dink a dink had all but seared itself into its brain. When will it end? She needed the bird to stop reminding her of the first man she had ever loved, her father, Ronald. She tilted her